This video series is presented by Drumtech, R Drums and Blash King. Welcome to the Acoustic to E Drums conversion series. This and the following videos are about the conversion process of a Pearl Rhythm Travel Up into an E Drum Kit. This video is all about the bass, drum. The lugs need to be applied first. The trigger system will be made in the same way than the tom triggers in the previous video. Except that the aluminium disc is 3mm thick and not only 2. The disc needs a hole in the upper middle area. This hole is needed to lead the trigger cables from one side of the disc to the other. The blade needs the 6 other holes for the metal angles. The protection layer is getting removed only at the spots we work on. We insert a chromat ring to protect the cables. The metal angles are constructed in the exact same way than the tom triggers. The extra nut is needed to move the disc more towards the inside of the shell. Extra washers are needed too. The trigger blade is inserted with the protective layer facing the kick mesh side. We use the same longer M4 screws to mount the angles to the lugs. The leg mounts get applied before continuing. We decided to use this new trick stereo jack plug. It can be used for mono or stereo cables. The jack is mounted with its washer and the nut. Be careful if using a wrench. The winding could be destroyed really quickly. The bass drum trigger we will use is from our drums. It can be tapped by the beaters directly and therefore it can be placed either in the middle or offset. Its diameter is 60mm, so we mark its spot with a circular in the middle of the plate. For now we only remove the protection layer at this spot. The trigger cushion has an adhesive surface, so it can be applied without any glue. Its cables need to be extended in this case. We extend the cables by soldering. Heat shrinking tubes will isolate them. We thread the cables through the grommet ring and solder them to the two pins of the jack plug. The heat shrinking tubes should always be applied before soldering. The minus pole is getting connected to the ground pin and the plus pole to the tip pin. The clamps are bonded to protect the cables. We execute a change with the angles, as six angles could have been too weak to hold the blade in place. It might happen that the angles are sliding, as there is a lot of power coming from the beaters. So we simply exchange the short screws with some longer ones. Some M5 spacer bolts will extend these screws. The second angle is applied in the same way than the other one. So we have 12 angles in total. Enough friction to provide the system from getting pushed inside. There are of course other ways to apply a second angle to the screws. An easy solution would be using a really long screw. The trigger cylinder has to overlap the bearing edge at 1.5 mm. The setup process is the same as for the trigger cones. All angles should be applied at the exact same height. We use an additional adhesive clamp to secure the cable. The aluminium plate needs to be damped, otherwise it would be a very loud bass drum. In this case we are using a foam rubber mat to cut out a circle a bit smaller than the disc. It should have a hole for the cable. We apply it with double layered adhesive tape, as the bass drum is getting a real resonance drum head. Two sheets of acoustic foam absorber are enough to damp the backside of the bass drum. We press the bass drum onto the foam and use the stamp to mark the circle. The foam is glued onto the blue mat with spray adhesive. The border will be covered with the same foam material. The foam stays in place without any glue. 
The most important part of the space drum is of course the branding. The protective layer will be removed shortly before mounting the mesh head. Both base drum hoops are still not wrapped. In this case the wrapping is simply applied with double layered adhesive tape. The bass drum receives a double layered mesh head from DrumTech. We apply the bass drum claws and their screws. The resonance head is a glossy black unlabeled head. It is totally damped through the acoustic foam pressing against the head. One bass drum claw was missing, so we ordered a new original claw and these Tama screws with the correct length. The bass drum is ready! That's it for this episode. If you're curious to see the end result, check out the upcoming videos of our conversion project. Click the left box to see a video about e-simple cleaning, click the box in the middle to watch the previous part, or click the box on the right side to see the next part of this series. Thanks for watching, see you next time!